not low key though, when you can see the, the activities that have already been entered on the calendar but to all many of them if not all but we have to celebrate we have been forced to change uh, the way we do things we are on our uh, different trajectory as to how we observe events how we do business things have changed so we have adapted let me say good morning to the folks at the cultural division so we'll talk more about the independence program another on another program but this morning we have guests on talking points so let me welcome you talking point this morning brought to you compliments Flo dominica what i'll do at this time is to recognize the contribution of flow and then we will get right into the discussion stay tuned calling all flow prepaid customers flow's new value loaded always on prepaid plans means great news for you get unlimited talk up to 50 percent more data and more international minutes to keep you always connected try our seven day always on plan today and get eight gigabytes of data and 500 local and international minutes for only 30 dollars dial star 129 pound now to activate a plan or visit discoverflow.co for more information in terms of conditions apply there's never been a better time to switch to flow switch now and get your 30-day prepaid plan with 50 gigabytes of data for only $50 that's only $1 per gig to keep you connected so you can do more of the things you do visit us in store today and let us know you're ready to switch we'll take it from there terms and conditions apply Okay, so welcome to Talking Point this morning. The focus on Financial Information Month. The ECCB, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, is continuing its efforts to bring about, I would say, financial empowerment through education. And annually around this time, it's Financial Information Month. We will look at the theme this year. We will look at the significance of the theme. There's a focus as well. We want to look at this morning minding your business so we will look at that so what i will do right now is go to our guests we are doing it differently this morning we do not have guests in studio so let me see how ready our guests are this morning let me give them the opportunity to introduce themselves So let me go to the internet. Imagine this, I tell you. This, these days are wonderful, eh? Good morning, gentlemen. I think we should have a lady. I've seen three gentlemen, though. So let's see how this goes. Good morning. The, the one was the one in was studio. In. We left her in studio. You left her in studio? OK. So good morning to you. That's the voice of Phoenix Belfield. Good morning, good morning. Um, good morning, Ms. Ivona. Good morning to the radio listeners of DBS. Uh, we're right. happy to be here. Well, we are happy to have you on as well. Brenton Hill, yeah, good morning to you. You were on on, on, on radio just recently. It's becoming a home for you now, family. Welcome. It appears, it appears so, my second home. All right, but welcome this morning. morning. But just tell us who you are, and then I'll go back to, to Felix Belfield because I want the proper introduction. Tell us who okay. you are. Good morning to you and the listeners. My name is Brenton Hill here, and I am the Vice President of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. All right, so welcome to the discussion this morning. We have as well Mr. Cletus Joseph. Good morning, sir. You come from the NDFD. Yes, good morning, Ayodhana, and good morning to your listeners in Radio Land. And it's nice to be on. Nice to hear your voice as well. And you have been, greetings you to have, my brothers. All right, you have been at the NDFD for a while, Cletus Joseph. Um, How many years? It, uh, if you want to call. Does it sound that much? Uh, like uh, 20, 2013, I think. Yeah. 
2013? Yeah. Okay, but you would have done so much. Today, huh? Sorry? You would have done so much, you know, from 2013 to now. I, I hope I would have. All right. So let me um, But the NBRB itself is 40 years old, so maybe... Um, years. Yeah, 1981 to 2021. So mm -hmm. perhaps you hear NDFD more than you hear Clitus Joseph. So that, that <laughs> might be a little been... confusion. <laughs> but that's good. That's good. 40 years. In, this is indeed a milestone. So let yes. me congratulate you as well. At DBS, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary. Sure. So for us, it's a proud moment as well. Yeah, you're our senior. Congratulations yeah. on that. 50 All years. Right, thank you. Yeah. Let Before me go us. back. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let me go back to Phoenix Belfield. Let me give you the opportunity to introduce yourself. Um, I see you every week you are on. You're, you're a radio man now. But t tell us, who, who is Phoenix Belfield? Uh, well, good morning again. Good morning with your listeners. I am the general manager for the Dominica Cooperative Societies League Limited. And uh, we again, we extend congratulations to the DBS Radio uh, for the anniversary and also mm -hmm. to our colleagues here who are also celebrating their own uh, professional milestones. All right. So welcome. And um, I was expecting someone from the ECCB. Yeah. Uh, Miss Shomer John is here, but we have the Mm -hmm. The able person of Brenton Hillier. Uh, okay. All right. Some of the issues, yeah, so. all right. All right. So, welcome, of course, to the discussion. It's Financial Information Month. I think that, that started somewhere in 2002, if I can remember. But someone will clarify if I am wrong. It's, um, it's, I think it's very um, significant for the ECCU, the member territories of the ECCU. Um, when you look not just at the themes of Financial Information Month, but the whole reason, you know, behind the observance, I think it speaks volumes of what we can do together. And um, so a lot has been done. And even this year, of course, when we look at the theme, very, very important because we are in challenging times. And um, the ECCU member territories, you know, uh, are looking at ways we can continue to work together. So um, in terms of the, 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 the theme for, for the Financial Information Month, let us look at, at, at what we have before us in terms of um, the theme this year. And anyone would like to, to, to talk about the theme? We want to look at the significance of this year's theme. OK, so you are right. Um, this Financial Information Month did actually start in 2002. OK. And the theme for it overall was financial empowerment through education. So it was really geared towards helping the ECCU region gain financially and strength, uh, knowledge, things to equip them to become better in navigating the climate, whether it was under normal circumstances or challenging times. Uh, what we have done is every year we have looked at an area of focus. So yes, we have an overarching theme, which is the financial empowerment for education, but we know the context of finance is very broad. So every year we try to target something that is going on at the point, at this point in time to remain relevant to the people who follow us. And for 2021, the area of focus that we chose was innovation in the face of financial adversity, respond, recover, and rise. But under that theme, we have under that area of focus, I should say, we had three sub themes that we came up with. We mm. felt that were necessary to be discussed in this current climate. The first being, let's get digital, which is equipping yourself for the digital way of life. And you said it earlier when we started internet, see how we are connecting right now. This is something that might not have been possible back then. The second area, second sub theme is making make saving, budgeting, and investing a habit for a more comfortable tomorrow. And the third area, minding your business, how your small business can stay afloat in tough times. And this is what we are here to discuss this morning, which is going to center around our entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. But what are we saying, um, Cletus Joseph, from the NDFD standpoint, in terms of minding your business? And when we look at the theme this year, innovation in the face of financial adversity and there's a, a, a sub theme to that respond recover and rise minding our business minding your business what are we saying Cletus joseph i'm not getting Cletus joseph i'm not sure what is happening i think he's responding though yes sorry about that. Okay, right, Cletus, yes go ahead yeah, yeah. um the, the thing 
of um, innovation in the face of adversity. I, I must say, um, it seems like we are always in some f sort of challenge. And um, the, the theme this year is quite um, appropriate in that um, reminds us that there is adversity, there always will be adversity, but we need to be able to be prepared to respond. We need to be able to recover, prepare ourselves for that, and we need to be able to rise from those actions. So. In, in essence, the, the theme is appropriate, and um, it's, it sounds uh, a reminder bell to the a private sector business persons mm -hmm. to be um, able and be prepared to to recover, to re be able to respond to whatever adversity challenges us, and eventually we will rise from from whatever um, adversity there is. So it's it's um, no way that any small business person would want. <laughs> To, would be feel comfortable to believe that you could just rest on um, whatever achievements you've had because it can be wiped away in a jiffy, uh, mm -hmm. if we may say that. And we we remember things like Hurricane Maria. We remember um, many many years ago, like um, Hurricane David. And um, here is uh, Mr. Mistress Miss uh, Madam COVID, who 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 is just uh, something that we had maybe not even imagined would have happened. So. As I always say, we were used to the brute forces come, hit, strike, brutalize us, and then it leaves us alone to go. But this one is so um, protracted and extended. Um, it's like two years now, um, 2019, end of 2019, um, 2020, 2021 is almost three quarter gone, and we're still living with that brutal force, silent but deadly. And um, it's impacting every aspect of life, and um, the businesses are not spared at all. And so the, the theme quite is quite appropriate, I believe, um, at this time. Mm -hmm. Very interesting that you mentioned that because we have had a lot to deal with, you know, as, as in the Caribbean in, in particular, when you look at the um, disasters and, and the hurricanes, we have, we have had to, to um, weather. We have, to, we have had to weather these storms. Last year, I think I remember the, the, the theme centered around building resilience in a COVID-19 environment. And look at where we are now, you know, a year after, because we are still grappling with this emerging challenge of COVID-19. This pandemic is really causing havoc in, yeah, in, but... in the Caribbean. But, but I want to ask the, the same question more or less to, to Phoenix Belfield and to Brenton Hillier. In terms of the significance of the theme, what are we really saying? Yes, you could you could go ahead, Brenton. You could go ahead. I want to I want to dissect the theme. You know, put it in a Caribbean context in terms of what you know the challenges that we are facing before we move forward and look at you know other aspects of this. Okay, so minding your business. Uh, what are you telling me? Minding your business. We talk about it in the individual sense a lot of times when we tell people stop looking at others, pay attention to your own affairs. But in the context of the business world. My need of business really means paying attention to your business as best as possible. Because I think what happens is that when things go well, we take things for granted. And it sort of masks some challenges that may have existed within our framework initially. And it's just that during tough times, those things that we find their find their way in coming out in the public. So it's not that the issues just arose out of the blue, but it's just the fact that because things are now challenges, they are now more prevalent, they're more obvious to us. So my a business really means going down deep into the framework of your business, looking at the business model, understanding it better to really put you in a position to address whatever challenge that you're facing right now, because whether as I mentioned, it's a good or bad time, we should have a strong understanding of our business because it can help us in two ways. If we really understand the nuts and the bolts and the gears of our business, during good times, we can leverage that knowledge to become even more successful. And on the flip side, during a challenge, we can leverage that knowledge to know what has to be tweaked to survive. And the pandemic that we're dealing with is just one financial crisis. Some people, some of the gurus in the market say that every 10 years, you should expect some form of crisis. We had the issue in 2008 where the markets crashed. 
We are now into 21, that's about 13 years from now. We have this pandemic, but it started before, which is less years. And after we get through this pandemic, in the next 10 years, we could see something occurring again. So being an entrepreneur, running a business involves understanding the risk in your market and putting plans in place to address those risks, to be able to navigate through the waters despite the challenges that have been occurring. So we need to pay more attention to our business. There are a lot of things that we have been taking for granted. One of the basic things, and we keep hearing about it from the banking sector, the financial sector, which is record keeping. So something as simple as record keeping, which was taken for granted before because money was flowing in, we felt like we would always stay on, up, on top. The money is no longer there. And the question we have to start asking ourselves is where is my money going? But we've all rec proper record keeping. That is a challenge for any entrepreneur to understand. So I believe that's where the mind in your business really plays and focus, focuses on, which is understanding our business as best as possible. Mm -hmm. Phoenix Belfield, um, when we look at the history of the credit union, because you come from the credit from the credit union league, when we look at the history of the credit union, you know, where it, where, how it started, the little man, you know, the, the worker, the laborer, you know, collecting money sometimes every week, you know, going in person to save. Of course, things are different. Apologies. What does minding your business mean? Well, from our context, um, we. We look at it, and, and Brendan, uh, the way Brendan explained it, could not be explained any better. Um, we look at it from a context, not only from the business, but we look at it from the context of your own unique approach to doing your business. Uh, from the credit union, we are always associated with the smaller man, providing uh, critical business inputs to their businesses, helping them achieve their dreams, uh, helping them to uh, get access to financing where they would not be able to qualify for financing from the mainstream financial sector. And so we understand the struggles of the average person, the average businessman, the mom and pop shop, um, in terms of their unique challenges. And within the context of mining your business, we look at a couple of things um, that we consider to be uh, critical ingredients to helping you to not only mine your business, but make mining your business a success. First of all, we look at, for example, X-ray in your business. And, and Brenton spoke about that earlier. It's about having a, a more macro view of your business, a bigger picture view of your business. A lot of times, you know, th there's often things that I, I wanted that I said that uh, men don't like to go to the hospital. They don't like to do uh, medical checkups. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's sometimes as businesses, we, we see on the surface things look like they're going well, but we are afraid to go beneath the surface. We are afraid to take a look at the financials. We are afraid to get somebody to look at the hard picture and tell us what is really happening with the business. And it, it only dawns upon us when the first crisis strikes, which is perhaps when we are unable to meet our debts or unable to pay our workers, and then we say things are wrong. But things have been wrong a long time ago, but we never took stock. We never took a deeper dive into the affairs of the business. And this is what this crisis is saying to us. And even as we're venturing into uh, financial information month undermining your business we need to set apart some time to take a deeper dive let's get away from the operational stuff of the business look at your receipts look at your sales look at your expenses put a budget in place try to assimilate a, some some financial statement or get some help if you can and look at the business it's only when you realize it's like i remember i was playing cricket a few years ago and i ran in and i bowled this ball and then i got up i fell down uh, collided with another colleague and, um, and I fell down and I just felt a pain in my shoulder. And I got up and I started bowling again. And, you know, they tell me, you know, you should go to the hospital. And I'm saying, no, it's just the pain. And a couple of days after when the entire shoulder became swollen, I was compelled to go to the hospital. Then I realized I had a dislocated shoulder. And if I had stayed with that, it could have been worse. But because you see the comfort of the pain and there's a story, there's a story that I often say about uh, this guy who's visiting his friend and he got to, he gets into the yard and he, he, he sees this dog and the dog is groaning and he asks his friend he said why is the dog groaning and the friend said to him that the dog is sitting is lying on a nail and he says well why doesn't he move and the friend says to him because it's not paining enough 
So and this is what mining your business is all about. Don't wait until it pains to begin to mine your business. Very, very interesting. We want to delve deeper, but what I will do is just um, recognize, of course, the, the observance this month, Financial Information Month. We have some catchy jingles that the ECCB centers, thanks, of course, to Shima John and, and, and the rest of the staff. And in a short while as well, I would like to get um, the views of Shima John, the country manager at the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. So just give us a feel of some of the activities that are on this year as you observe Financial Information Month. Stay tuned. All right, we'll get back to the correct jingle in a short while, but we have now on the line the country manager of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Shumil John. Good morning to you. Good morning, Ivona, and good morning to your listeners. All right, and I'm happy to have you on as well. I had to have, you know, a female with me. I have three gentlemen on, so I'm very happy that you came on. Um, and I have to say as well that what, what Shumil John has done, and, and of course she works with a team, but um, she really continues to ensure that uh, she creates that educational link with the populace and she utilizes the radio and social media very, very well. Shuma, let me say again, good morning, welcome. Thank you. And um, so we, we, we started, we, we looked at the theme, the significance of it, and what really the ECCB is saying to the member territories, the ECCU, from, from your office, from your seat as country manager. Um, um, let us look at that. And we want to look at the activities as well. Um, as we observe Financial Information Month. But tell us about um, the, the observance this, this this year. So what, what we do throughout oh. the region, throughout the ECCU, that's the eight countries that use the EC dollar, each agency office and head office, we partner with different companies, whether they're the commercial banks, utility companies, private sector. So we partner with companies and we come together and we do a calendar of events for our country. So in Dominica, we have 24 partners. All the guests in studio, they're our partners. And uh, for Dominica, because of COVID, we cannot do one-on-one. -on -one. So usually we would have a mass, we would have school visits and so on. So we cannot do that. So what we are doing is a lot of radio discussions, interactive radio discussions, and we are doing a lot of social media with finance focus. This year we have three new companies on, that is Jolly Pharmacy, Finance Focus, and GIC. This year we are also doing some donations. So we'll be donating small amounts, but monetary amounts, to the Cancer Society, the Grotto Home for the Homeless, and the Dominica Council on Aging. So we will be doing activities for the youth, for the young people. So, you know, we have our radio program on DBS. So for the next upcoming program, we'll focus on Financial Information Month. We have programs for people who are working, people who are close to retirement, and also for the elderly. So we'll be doing something on the Dominica Council of Aging program just to help out because we know that the elderly have a lot of issues. They have problems utilizing the online platforms of our partners <clears throat> so we are going to speak to them on that so we'd like to thank our many partners all of the commercial banks aid bank and dfd is 24 so there's a lot of names to call the insurance companies pan american sagico nagico icwi so all of the companies ue dominica youth business trust so we'd like to thank all of them for coming on board and we really hope that when we will speak and when we discuss the different topics, mm -hmm. that that will actually push people 
to doing better. If we're thinking about budgeting and saving, then that will kind of push people to, I'm going to start budgeting, I'm going to start saving. Mm -hmm. Today, we are speaking about minding your business. So we hope the business owners will learn something from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to stay on the line still, but let me just go back to to the three gentlemen and you know some some point very important point that you raised um and it is obvious you know that the eccu region has been faced with a major challenge of of preserving its economy during the height of this pandemic it, it is it is obvious and we spoke about that of course even at, at the very beginning but i want to hear from the gentlemen though in terms of what we have done you know in terms of the resilience and, and the efforts and the strategies that we have implemented to make things work even amidst this pandemic how do we i would say pivot our focus you know from grappling with the challenges to to rebuilding i'm not sure we want, we want to take this to take this question first peter's joseph phoenix belfell brenton hillier Okay. Um, as we, we we started in the introduction, you know, and um, just reflecting on the theme a little bit more, that um, minding your business uh, is essentially a part of your business, right? So you, you have to be cognizant, consistently looking at what is happening in your ecosystem, in your environment. Uh, what are the macroeconomic indicators showing? And um, there will be shocks, yes, um, and you have to be prepared for that. But it's essentially, you need to, to to take certain actions that will help you to make the decisions that are required. And somebody hinted about record keeping earlier on, and it's, again, just another part of our business operations that we have neglected. And um, not, not, not just because we should keep records and... and um, when when we say records people always want to think of um, just financial records but there are other sets of records that we have to keep uh, records on human resources on um wh what sort of business model you operate um you know and, and a lot of other other stuff that you need to um pay attention to but importantly the financial performance of your business is essentially like the lifeblood of your organization if you your, your finances are, are not um up to scratch, you're going to struggle. And hence, you need to have proper um, financial record keeping systems, um, good financial management skills and techniques and um, data that will support whatever decisions that you make. So these, these things are critical to it and, and they are essential parts of your business and not just because um, we come up with the theme now to mind your business then you have to sort of say oh yes i have to mind my business now and then uh, by the time the program is over or by the time the COVID crisis is over i forget about it these are essential parts of, of business operations that we have to take into consideration and ensure that we do the best and these when, when we look at the other aspect of it, building sustainability, how, how do we do that? The ability to respond talks about um, resilience. And, and that's what resilience is, the ability to get up, the ability to rise, and the ability to grow from there. That's what resilience is. But it does not just happen automatically. We, we have to put systems in place. So what, what is our, um, lately we, we have been talking a lot also about um, business continuity plans, business continuity and crisis management. But this should not only come to the fore when the crisis arises. These have to be things that are pre-thought of. You think of it before and you put it in place before in the event of. And you even have to anticipate the unimaginable that um, something may happen, but in the event that something happens and we didn't anticipate what are we going to do, who do I turn to, um, where do I have reserves, uh, reserve resources, reserve cash, reserve human resources that I can call on to assist me. So, so this, these are essentially um, very, very important parts of the ability to um, respond, recover, and rise, essentially to be resilient in the sense of the word. Now, there are the, the issues of financial sustainability, which, which is inseparable um, with regard to, to, um, to that. Um, if you are sustainable, um, it means that you have a level of um, resilience built into your system. So, so these are very critical. Now, when, when crises occur, um, it is important that we do not just focus on the now 
and um, forget the future and forget that there may be opportunities lurking within the entire um, crisis that, that we face. So again, the ability to be able to conduct your little analysis, your SWATs, your, your pests, pestels, pestels, and um, your, your, your evaluate your, your, fire, your forces that affect you are also important. So you will look within, within COVID crisis, what happened? What, what can I do? How, how do I continue to make my business relevant to my clients? Um, we know early on in the crisis, a lot of persons, whether they were selling makes and Accra or whatever else, some of them said, look, I have a little sewing skill, so let me try to make masks for sale. Yes, that, but how do we even evolve from there? And things. Some of the, our businesses are structured for maybe a little more online sales and marketing. So how do we harness those those skills? Where do I get the resources to help me to do that? Thing? So these are, are things that we have to um, think of. And in our strategic plan, we, we need to detail those things and think about them and have them. So it prepares us for whatever comes. And the crisis that you prepare for may not necessarily be the one that shows up at the time. But the fact that you are prepared for a disruption, for, for a shock, will put you in a position to be able to respond better, to be able to recover and grow from there. Yeah. Let me, Shema, you are still on, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Now, in terms of the observance of, of, of Financial Information Month, we have had this from since 2002. Um, there's a lot being done, you know, in Dominica from the ECCB um, office. Um, but do you see, um, in terms of the message that you impart every year, um, do you see people maybe adhering or falling in line with some of the of, of, of the suggestions that you know that the ECCB gives? Well, I would say people would meet me on mm -hmm. the road and they would say that's a very good program. Up to yesterday, I was going to do my afternoon walk and a lady, my neighbor, she was like, I heard you on the radio. I really have to try saving, you know, every year you mm -hmm. go on and you say it and I say I'm going to start, I'm going to start and I'm yet to start. So people, they do listen. And I know they would like to, but it is very hard when you have a habit hmm. to break that habit hmm. and to start with a better habit. So I think people hear, they listen, they want to, but they have difficulties. So hmm. that is why we cannot give up. We have to come year after year and preach the message. And we hope if it's one or two people we get to convert to have better habits, then we feel satisfied. Mm -hmm. I like what you just said about this hard habit to break, because I want to go on now to Brenton Elier. Of course, we have gone digital, and for many, it is a challenge to adjust to this paradigm shift. How are we meeting those who have this hard habit to break? I put in, I'm putting this in inverted commas, because I'm, I'm just taking a quote there from, from Shimmer John. How are we meeting these people? When you say meeting these people, are you referring to the customers or are you referring to the... How do you get some of the people converted? Because as I said, we have gone digital. And if you um, if you remember what I asked, um, I think it was Phoenix Belfield earlier in terms of the history okay. of the union and how it started. People would be following lines to go and, you know, to go to, to, to save. Now it's different, of course. And, you know, we are now in a digital age. How do we get, you know, these people to come on board? I believe and it's... Been done? I believe it requires the efforts of everyone. I don't think any entrepreneur on their own can achieve that. For example, we have this program right now, and we have other parts of the ECCB events for this month that speaks to digital strategy. Mm -hmm. We also have had work being done through the DAIC on having a digital preference, sorry, presence and being prepared to adapt. We also hear about different programs that are available to help you adapt to the climate. So it's not just one player in the market, but as you can see, a lot of different players are making an effort to educate people. And from the entrepreneur's perspective, it's can be done through different means. One of the means that could be looked at, and I'm just throwing ideas out there, but at the end of the day, every entrepreneur has to make a decision for themselves. But mm -hmm, what are the sort of rewards that as an entrepreneur, I can incorporate into my digital platform to encourage persons to come on board or to encourage persons to engage me like that? Now, obviously it's gonna be difficult for certain target markets, especially based on the business that you're actually running. But it really goes back to the sub theme of what we're talking about today, minding your business. 
And it's only when you have a full understanding of your business, you're going to really see the possibilities that exist for that transformation from the brick and mortar to the digital presence. One thing is certain that COVID-19 has taught us that you need to have a digital footprint. And a digital footprint means just having some sort of presence online, that if somebody goes on Google, searches for your name or searches for your business's name, that they're able to find out about you. Uh, so at a minimum, that should be there. And I think that is entirely up to the entrepreneurs in their own capacity to set that up. Now, taking it a step further, which is the digital engagement or e-commerce, that is where some additional work and support may be needed. And if the entrepreneur feels that they don't have the capacity to do so on their own, or if they don't have the resources, the skill sets needed, then one thing about business, it, running a business is that you have to look at partnerships. And I like to use the example of Apple and Samsung, and you heard about the story at the last moment that we spoke, where Samsung is providing the glass, their glass to Apple to make phones, and they're both in competition, but they found a way to work together towards the common goal of providing the populace with cell phones out there. And sometimes as an entrepreneur, you have to realize that you just kind of do it on your own. So where you have the shortfalls or those quote-unquote weaknesses, you have to start looking for some sort of partnership or service or outsourcing capacity of someone else to assist you with that. And I know, for example, just to use what I've seen in the market, in the past there used to be a sort of disconnect between people in the agro-processing industry being able to take their products to a wider market, I would say. And wider market also involves exporting. Uh, we've seen that Charlie's has set up their website where it has provided an avenue for those agro producers to get access to a bigger market. And since COVID-19, we have actually seen the growth of the e-commerce platform in Dominica. We have Shop DM767, which has recently come on board. I think they just celebrated a year of being in business and their whole mission is really to take the products they produce from our agro product processors and expand their reach and now prior to COVID-19 the people who were in that industry may have found it difficult on their own to set up a website on their own to develop some sort of e-commerce platform but right now you have a supplier who has done all of that work for them so now they can partner with when it's Jolly's or shops, the M767, to get access to those online platforms to reach people on social media. So it goes back to the sub theme, minding your business. And we heard it from Peter jo Joseph earlier. The first step is really conducting a SWOT of your business. What are the strengths of your businesses, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats? And pretty area of opportunities if you see that there's an opportunity to get your product outside there that's when you have to start asking yourself if i cannot do it on my own who can i partner with to do that what are the facilities the suppliers the avenues available in my current market to help me to take my product from a to b to maybe a to z all the way to the end so we have to really do a thorough analysis of all businesses to see the opportunities that exist especially via the social media platform, the digital presence, and see how we can then leverage that for the context of what we do. And also as a means of being in contact, but at the same time, just, I mean, it's important to have a digital presence, but I was recently part of a seminar and there was this hotel chain that actually spoke about the importance of understanding a business. And we all, I've heard that, okay, COVID-19, you have to be online, you have to provide services online, but that hotel chain, when they did their market research, they interviewed their clients, they found out that more than 60% of the people interacting with the hotel preferred to communicate with them via the standard telephone call. So yes, COVID-19 pushed people towards a digital platform, but for their particular business, people still wanted to hear the voice on the phone. 
So yes, they made the online platform available, but then they pumped a lot of resources into having people manage phones to speak to people on the call because that is what mattered to their business and their clientele. So it's one thing to just tell people you must be online, but it's another thing for you to really mind your business and see what it is that people want from your business in this current climate. Very interesting points that you raised, Brenton, and it brought me back to something that happened yesterday. Of course, we spoke about the growth, you know, of, of the e-commerce sector. You, 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 you mentioned that we have to move from the brick and mortar to the digital presence and reaching people on social media. Yesterday, and, and I want to ask um, Phoenix Belfield that question. Yesterday, we were on a tailspin. WhatsApp, Facebook, um, Instagram failed us. Communication suffered big time. Have you given this much thought um, where business is concerned? Is this a threat to business? Phoenix Belfield, let me get well, your, your, your take on this. Oh, absolutely. And um, the, the thing about it is that with every technology, just like with every business processes, there are advantages, there are disadvantages, there are pros, there are cons. Um, for example, yes, we, we all saw the outages um, that happened with WhatsApp, and then subsequently everybody reverted to Telegram, and then Telegram exploded too. Um, and then we see other networks um, begin to um, push for the adoption of their own platforms. Um, one of the things that we've learned in the technology, and I mean, I'm, I'm not only speaking from a vantage point of, for example, M. Laja, um, but also what we've noticed is that the, the technology, and, and Brendan mentioned it earlier, the technology affords us um, some possibilities that otherwise we would not have been able to benefit from. Um, in terms of economies of scale, we can reduce, we can actually reach a greater mass of persons just by simply setting up a, a social media presence for our business, um, just by simply opening up a, a Facebook page or a YouTube channel or begin to um, do some streaming. Um, we can meet people that we would have never thought of. And, and because the world now is, is a global village, Ivana, it makes it so much easier and so much more accessible, like the initiative of Jollies, for local farmers, local craft, people who have a traditional craft in the cottage industry, to now market to the wider population. Um, so yes, you are going to have um, some failures in technology, just like you're going to have failures with your business processes. Your machine might break down. The studio might not be functioning. You might have outages. These are just some of the things that can happen in the part of business processes. But should you be alarmed by it? Should you be dissuaded by it? Should you just resort to your own pencil and paper reaching? Well, the choice is yours. Um, we, we bring the case to, for example, even in the case of, um, uh, for example, uh, M. Laja Mobile Wallet, whereas uh, a business would have to wait until somebody brings a payment to them or brings a check to them, they can now receive payments digitally. With our frictionless platform, they can now advertise on the platform. They can now receive payment from anybody, whether in Dominica, in the OECS, or wherever part of the world that they are. They can use it to pay bills and all of that. So the convenience that these platforms and the technology provide for you is on parallel compared to what our traditional uh, means and modes of businesses will provide for us as opportunities. So yes, you would have to grapple with some of the the failures whenever they happen. And like I said, the failures are not only unique to technologies, they're unique to, they're, they're also part of every aspect of our business. I mean, sometimes we're trying to connect and you, you get a, a, a failing connection. Sometimes um, systems break down, machines break down, your cooker break down, your different things happen. And, and this is part of how you, you in essence, you, you build resilience and you refine your operating structure so that you can mitigate against those instances where the technology or the equipment fails you mm -hmm. all right okay so let's just um uh, remind you that we are on to talking point very interesting discussion this morning minding your business um shuma shuma john let me bring you in here i wanted to bring in though um one of the tips from the eastern caribbean central bank very important one as well but um i just wanted you to just give me an idea in terms of, and I'm looking at the digital dialogues organized by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. We have had a lot of them in, in, in recent time. Very, very interesting discussions. And is this is this a monthly, or, or um, or, or does this happen every 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 two weeks? Give us an idea. And, and in terms of some of the topics that have been discussed and how important it has have, been. We do not have a set 
mm-hmm. period. So okay. we cannot say it's every two months or mm-hmm. every month. It's whenever it, it's necessary, okay. we would do a digital dialogue. We have spoken on food mm-hmm. security. We have spoken on health matters, on education, transportation, mm-hmm. a wide range of different topics that would affect the region. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's something we started doing because of COVID. And that's what I wanted to come with. I wanted to mm-hmm. see that although we have COVID and it is a challenge, I would like to see businesses use that challenge as an opportunity mm-hmm. to do something different. We cannot always stay with our same mode of operation all of the time. Mm-hmm. So, for example, I would like to encourage businesses, as we speak about mind your business, mm-hmm. I would like to encourage them to build capacity. Many times we go into businesses and one person, if that person is not there, it's like whatever you come and do, it cannot be done. Mm-hmm. We cannot continue to operate that way. Other people in the business need to be able to do a lot of other things. So you cannot depend on one employee because at any point in time, we can just call in sick or somebody can can yeah. fall and die. So it's very important that businesses build capacity mm-hmm. among their staff. We would also like to encourage that they save up for a rainy day and COVID is a very, very rainy day. Mm. We would also like to tell them, do not put all your eggs in one basket. So if, for example, see what happened yesterday, if a business was totally relying on Mm -hmm. WhatsApp, I mean, that was a few hours without being able to communicate. Mm -hmm. But what that did, it sent a lot of us to another platform. So those of us that couldn't get onto WhatsApp, I saw so many people getting onto Beep Mm -hmm. or, or to Snapchat. So it's very important that we have other ways of communicating. We build capacity. Another thing, when you ask if every year we come with financial information months and if people really change, what I realize is that unless people have to be accountable, it is very difficult to get Mm -hmm. them to change. So they will change if they have to account for it. Mm -hmm. So if we say you have to save $100 every month, They may not do that unless they have to come and show or they're going to be penalized. Very few times you get people just doing it out of discipline. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, Shema, um, uh, as well, I wanted to get a sense of how the other member territories um, observe Financial Information Month. Is this a collective effort or is it a situation where every country designs the way it is, um, it will observe the the, the What we do is that long before October, so somewhere around May, April, we would come together as a region. So all of the countries and their partners will come together and we will have a discussion. You know, with with technology, we do that via Zoom or via Web, WebEx. So we would come together and based on what's happening in the region, we would think of different topics and different areas of interest. Once we have that and we agree on the theme and the sub-themes, then each country would organize their own calendar of events. For this year, we're going to be having a one regional symposium on the 20th. So we will have speakers from probably all of the eight countries, and then everybody we can hold at least 500 people. They can log on, and hopefully DBS will partner with us to be able to bring it live so the general public can hear it. So we do things as a region and we do things as country individually. Because, for example, in Dominica, we would hardly have activities for financial information months during the last week of October because, you know, that's our independence. So each country would see what's happening in their country and do their calendar of events to suit their country. Right. Um, It's talking point. If you're just tuning in, let us get get, uh, a word from the... ECCB Financial Information Month, and then we continue with the discussion. Stay tuned. It's Financial Information Month in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. Financial empowerment through education. If you don't know what that is, let me tell you all about it. Learn to spend wisely. Invest to go your money. Business stability. Work to financial security, prosperity for all of we. FIM is for you and me. FIM is for everybody. So tell your friends and your whole family. Financial empowerment through education. Build yourself and the entire vision. Learn to spend. Why- 
wisely. Invest to go your money. Business stability. Step up financially. Financial Information Month. Financial Empowerment through Education. And if you did not know, well, now you know. We are on to Talking Point. We're discussing Financial Information Month. The focus, really, of our discussion this morning is minding your business. And, and this says a lot. Eh? We are putting this into proper context, or in a regional context as well, but more so a Dominica context. And we have three gentlemen with us. And we also have Shuma John, who is the country manager of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. I'm looking at the time, gentlemen and lady, and um, it's almost 10 o'clock. So we'll have to begin to get closing remarks. But what I would want, though, is... Um, and maybe just to reiterate some of the tips you would have um, have mentioned earlier. I would like to hear that from all of you. I know we touched on a lot of things um, this morning, but but just as we as we end the discussion, you know, what is the message you would like to leave with with, with listeners at this time as we you know grapple with these challenges that confront us? What is your message? Um, of course, in 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 the context of what we are looking at, minding your business. So let us start with you. Um, Mr. Joseph, Clitus Joseph, the Executive Director of the National Development Foundation of Dominica, celebrating 40 years, of course, this year. Okay, yeah. Um, one, of the, one of the things I, I, we at the NDFD sort of always remind clients is that um, challenges will always come, right? Um, and um, it is not, it will not always be in the form of a major shock, such as um, we are right now, um, COVID or or Maria, but but in your operations on a consistent basis, there will be um, challenges that you have to face. Like what what changes are happening in the marketplace is is a challenge in itself. And then you what what how how are consumers customers' choices changing are, are things that you have to be able to figure out. All as part of minding your business as as small business persons, you have to figure that out. So you need to be able to capture those um, those happenings, those trends, and how do you do that? And um, one of the ways um, in in marketing is that you need to um, collect data, collect information from your clients, find out what it is that they are interested in, what would they like is my product the way you want or is my service up to your standard is there anything that i can add is there anything you you, you do not like and um so that that brings me down to the point of how, how often do we as business persons conduct service to find out um information up from our clients as to our our offering and, and essentially what we what we offer the clients is what what we call a market offering be it a, a product a service a combination of, of of both which most of the time is the case because there are no no pure products every product that you provide comes with a, a level of um service with it so how can you perfect that market offering to the customer's delight and that is what you want to do in in the in the in the end that you want to ensure that your customers receive what it is that that they, they desire and you you exceed their expectations in order to ensure that they keep coming back and they come, keep bringing the money for you which which is the the bottom line of what what you want so you you have to consistently and constantly monitor your environment. You need to be able to collect it. And, and data collection does not have to be any elaborate um, major big survey with how many page, pages of paper. Some critical questions that you can just have and you rehearse it. And then it depends, again, on the size of, of your operation. So you customize your, your survey to that regard and find out what, what, what the customers are thinking, what they like, what, what they would like to see added or what they don't like in, in it. So in, in the event of, let's say, a small boutique, um, maybe in Roseau, that just maybe one, two persons work in there. And then you, you need to constantly engage your clients. And um, you can use even the same social media that we've mentioned, um, the, the WhatsApps, the Facebooks, messaging, and um, Instagram, and all of those others that small short survey questions, uh, three, four, five questions with quick answers and you give them an opportunity to express is, is a, 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 um, a very um, effective way of collecting data from clients. So my, my um, thing to small business persons from an NDFD perspective, and even if when you go into 
to launch a new business? Um, who are you serving is a critical answer. Who tells you that, that this is what the clients want? So why not inform yourself and get a little bit of information from them before you go head on into something that you, you don't really know and which is, again, part of minding your business. If that is what you did, you have to be prepared at some point in time to change the model that you, you are operating. Um, this is not what the clients want, so you have to change to be able to do that. So which is where you, you know, you what, what, what is called entrepreneurial entrepreneurship and innovation they always come in so as small business persons you always have to be thinking to get ahead to get ahead of the competition so uh, you have to be thinking all the time using data using information that you collect and um, there, there's a saying that the best way to get ahead is to use the one that you have and you as small business persons always have to be using the head always have to be thinking as to how i can improve how i can increase my sales how i can reduce my expenses how i can make my product or my service better these are critical questions that small business persons and we at ndfd even when you come to us for assistance in terms of financial or, or even creating a business plan and we offer those services at ndfd we can help you to develop your business plan which will include a marketing plan some financial plans some projections you know and, and, and other aspects of, of a business plan that we en encourage you why don't you do a short survey and, and figure out what people think and as i said it doesn't have to be elaborate or too elaborate to to kill your budget but it can be effective by being short sweet and, and to the point so that, that is one of the things that we want at NDFD to remind clients, to always be conscious that um, challenges and shocks will come. They are ever present, as a matter of fact, and minding your business is an essential part of your daily operations so you can spot the trends and um, cater to the needs of your businesses because that's the essence of what you do. Um, that you constantly provide them with what they want and they will keep coming and bringing the money for you. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting what you just said. And you know, you said a lot. And what I'm, I'm really taking home right now is the importance of conducting surveys. You know how important it is for data collection, and um, uh, that is very, very important. You have to constantly engage clients and things like that. But let us hear from Brenton Hill here as well. Brenton, as we close, as I said, we are getting closer to the end of this program. Very interesting. I wish we could just go on, you know, because these are discuss the discussions that we have, we need to have, you know, on radio and on social media as well, especially now. But what 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 is your, your, your closing message? My closing message would really be the subframe. Mind your business. Like mind your business. Yes, mind your business, but you mind your business in the context of understand every aspect of your business do not take anything for granted right now you need to have a basic basic level proper record keeping don't just go out there and spend for items using cash and not get a receipt always get your receipts organized by months and then you move on to step two which is translating that data into information so you if you cannot do it on your own or talk the services of someone with a content experience so you can understand what is going on in your business because the receipt in itself is just data but when you have data coming together with other data it's a into information and when you have information then you can start making strategic decisions mm -hmm. and i can speak about it from a personal level we speak about having personal budgets and watching our spending from the individual perspective and a lot of people will testify that after they have done that exercise they saw trends in their spending that they were not aware of so for example you buy bread every day sometimes in the morning and the afternoon but you just get into the habit of buying bread but when you actually have to sit down and tally the amount of money you spend on bread you can actually open your eyes just using it as an example in a similar fashion we in the business world in the entrepreneurial world often find ourselves spending on items but not making a conscious note of what it actually comes up to at the end of the month because when you tabulate those individual expenditures and see the overall impact at the end of the month, it tells us a different story. It gives us an idea of where we can maybe reduce some expenses, where we have some wiggle room to pursue some strategic objectives of ours. 
So you really have to mind your business to the extent of understanding exactly what is going in and what is coming out of it. And you have to, at the core of it, understand your market. And Peter's just spoke to that. And I cannot underscore that point anymore because the essence of entrepreneurship is understanding what the needs are or what the pain points are of society and then coming up with a solution to address those needs. And I sometimes tell people, entrepreneurship is not necessarily about your passion for something. So I'm just using a story. I may have a passion for Blackberry and Phoenix Belfield is well aware of that. But because of my passion for Blackberry, I cannot just go to the market and tell them, I love Blackberry, you have to love it too. If the market does not have any need for it, despite how much I love it, it does not make sense for me to go into business for it. So at the core of it, whatever business you are in, whether you're thinking of a new idea or whether you have an existing business, you have to see if what you are going to do or what you are doing is currently addressing the needs of the market. And that is very important for our existing entrepreneurs because pre-COVID, you had one set of needs. Post-COVID, the needs may have changed. So was what you were offering previously now still relevant to this market? And if it's not relevant, what can you change to bring back the relevance to what you were offering? It does not necessarily mean that you have to stop what you were doing altogether, but what can you tweak to keep people satisfied? So, I mean, I could say more, and I know we're over time, but it really goes back to having that very profound knowledge of your business. No one should know your business better than you right now. You have to make the effort and the time, not during your free time. I often hear people say, when I have free time, I will sit down and do this. Okay. It's your business. This is your livelihood. This is your bread and butter. You have to make the time. That's what I would like to end on. All right. We'll end with Shilma, but let me hear from Phoenix Belfield as we as we as we wrap up this this important program. What is your closing message, Mr. Belfield? I don't know. I'm not hearing you, Phoenix Belfield. I know you're speaking. Yes, I can yes. see you. All right. Okay. That's, 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 yes, that's, yes, that's, sorry for that. Your closing um, message. It is impossible to add up to Cletus Joseph and Brendan Hillis <laughs> for you. Um, but for me, I, I would I would simply advise the radio listeners mm -hmm. uh, that we not allow this crisis to be wasted. Uh, because of how important the crisis is, it affects all businesses. Mm -hmm. And we've seen remarkable stories of businesses that have remodeled their core business structure. We've seen businesses that have failed We've seen businesses that have reaped significant awards, rewards. We've seen businesses that have expanded beyond their boundaries in rapid pace. We can look at the Zoom experience of what happened with Zoom from just a, a small meeting site and how it exploded about hundreds of fold in, in, in a matter of weeks. We all can shape and define our own success stories. But like uh, Brenton said, and, and like Clayton said, and even Shama said, we need to introspect in our business. We need to look at our business. We need to uh, take an X-ray of it. We need to look and see what is working. And it's so important to mind your own business. Minding your own business is not just a cliche. It is about looking at what concerns your business. What resources do you have? What things affect your business? And how can you really find what you have and the unique situation that you're in to bring forward your vision? Because a lot of times in businesses, we make decisions based on what the competitor is doing. So the neighbor is doing that, or my competitor is doing that, so let me do that. Or somebody else is doing that, let me do that. You do not have the same resources that your competitor has. You do not have the same resources um, uh, that another person in a similar sector have. You do not have the same talents. You do not have the same access to finance. You may have a similar dream or a similar vision, but the resources and all of those things are different. So what you need to do is hunker down on what is your own. What do you have? What resources? If you're operating from your home, you're a small mom and pop shop, you don't have a big a brick and mortar business in Roseau, there's nothing to say that you cannot reach the masses right from your home. But it's important for you to analyze what you have, the resources you have, where you are to determine where you are going. And by minding your own business, you can charter your own unique path to success. Right, Shema John, let us end with you. And okay. um, I want to give you the opportunity to end um, this discussion. But, um, and even as I said, Ishim, I also want um, 
to inform you from my work, of course, as a broadcaster, you know, and how I view some programs. Um, please do your best as country manager in Dominica to ensure that this um, digital digital dialogue program, you know, continues for a very long time. I think it's very, very important. The, the reviews are very, very positive. So let's see if we can go on with this as well. So let's get your final message. Thanks, Ivan. We do intend to continue. So minding your business, what I would leave with the companies and even individuals, always build capacity. If COVID-19, after almost two years of COVID-19, if we do not change, if we didn't change anything in our life or in our businesses, COVID would have been a wasted crisis. So I would say use the challenges as opportunities to do something better, do something different. We never imagined that we could work from home. Since COVID, we have been working from home for over one year now. So yes, COVID was um, negative, but we have to take opportunities from that. I would say you have to continue to partner. As you can see, ECCD would not have been able to bring financial information months on its own and be successful at doing it. And that's the reason for the partnership. I would call on companies to always think about their corporate responsibility because it's not just about making money. It's very important to give back. And I would just like to thank our companies, all our partners that partnered with us this year, the Credit Union, Central and National, our Societies League, the insurance companies, Pan American, Sajiko, Najiko, and Insurance Company of the West Indies, State Bank and National Development Foundation of Dominica, all of the commercial banks, National Republic and Swiss Caribbean, our Digicel company, Dominica Youth Business Trust, GIS, National Youth Council, Dowasco and Domlec, Dominica Social Security, University of the West Indies, and of course, ECCB is the coordinator. Thank you so much for that. I'm not for Dina. Thank you so much, Ivona, for the support. And we will continue... We will continue to do other programs on the yes day. yes definitely there's a very interesting um children's program as well and we'll talk about that the next time but yeah but keep we'll up like to encourage um parents to have their children listen every second sunday in the month on dbs radio and they also tune with another radio station mm. and we we are happy that we are able to bring that we would like to start from scratch if we can have children know about finances mm. from early we think that will do for a better community, a better society. Yeah, definitely. Well, let me thank you, Shuma. Let me thank as well Mr. Phoenix Balfield, who is the general manager of the Dominica Cooperative Societies League. He also has many other caps, as well as Brenton Hillier, who has other caps as well. He is the um, vice president of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. And Cletus Joseph, who wears all the caps as well, but is here in his capacity as the executive director of the National Development Foundation of Dominica. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, lady. And just as I leave, I mm -hmm. to, tomorrow we are launching a program on Finance Focus Facebook page and mm -hmm. Financial Information Month. This is your Facebook page, and it is on Mining Your Business, all right. different panelists. Mm -hmm. So we're asking people to go on and tune in. And we would like, we, we encourage feedback because mm -hmm. feedback, as the governor always says, is a gift. Yeah. Give us your feedback. It will allow us to do better. Mm -hmm. um, and if I know you well, you will always take the opportunity to advertise everything. So bring in everything <laughs> that you can. But that's good. That's yeah. good, you know. That's um, the metal, you. you know, of a country manager. So that's good. So gentlemen, thanks a lot. Mr. Phoenix Belfield, you'll be on radio again when? This Thursday? I yes, I'm looking forward to it. It's yes. always a pleasure to be supported by DBS. Yes, thanks. Clitus Joseph, thank you, Brenton Elia. Thank right, you. So that's talking points. It's Financial Information Month in the Eastern Caribbean Currency.